What's going on guys? Big Jar here with Warp Academy. As you know, our Ableton certified trainers here at Warp Academy have done a full playlist of in-depth videos looking at each of the features in the Ableton Live 10.1 update. So I'll leave a link below. Make sure you check them all out so you guys can get up and running as quick as possible. In this video, I'll be taking a look at the new channel EQ. It's simple, but really cool. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so in this video, we're going to be getting into the channel EQ. And this is a flexible and simple EQ with curves and gain ranges suitable for a variety of audio material. The shapes of the filter adapt based on how the controls are set and always provide a musical result. This is a great EQ for placing a sound in the mix or sweetening a bit. And this is kind of what I want to show you guys today, my process of cleaning and placing my sounds. So first off, is there a difference between cleaning and mixing? And if so, what is it? Well, I believe there is a difference. I believe that cleaning Cleaning is either done or not, and mixing is more subjective and creative. So we're going to use the clean then sweeten method, and this takes two EQs. I know some people will tell you not to EQ in solo, other people tell you to EQ in solo. I'm going to give you an approach that's best of both worlds. We're going to clean in solo, we're going to use an EQ8 for that, and then we're going to sweeten in context, so not in soloed, and that's where we're going to use our channel EQ. So a couple things to think about while we're cleaning, so frequencies to watch out for. Well, there's going to be a little checklist here. Remember, these aren't hard and fast rules. I want you to learn the box before you can think outside of it. So these are great places to start. So first off, we're going to cut our lows with a low cut filter or a high pass filter. So a safe bet is rolling off to around 100 hertz for everything that's not a sub or a kick. Next, we're going to look for mud and mud is found somewhere around the 200 to 500 hertz range. We're going to use shallow reductions and a wider cue. Then we're going to look for some boxiness and that's found between 700 and 1k. Same thing, we're going to use shallow reductions, wider Q. And then finally, we're going to look for some harshness, and that's found between 3 and 5K. And these cuts are going to be a little more aggressive and a little bit tighter cues. All right, after we get it cleaned, we're going to sweeten and place our sounds in the mix with our new channel EQ. We're going to be using a special Ableton project to demo these features. It's going to be available for free on Warp Academy. Just check the link below the video to get all the free downloads. That way, you can follow along with me. Let's get into it. So before jumping in, let's take a look at this device. So what you got here is a pretty simple and easy to use channel EQ. You've got your high pass or low cut filter at 80 hertz. It's a fixed rate. You can either turn it on or not. We got our low shelf gain. This boosts or attenuates low frequencies within the range of plus or minus 15 dB. When boosting, the cutoff frequency is around 100. When attenuating, the cutoff frequency is slightly higher. We also have a high shelf gain. This boosts or attenuates high frequencies within the range of plus or minus 15 dB. Note that when cutting, the shelving filter is combined with a low pass filter that has a cutoff progressively set to a lower frequency. The mid gain knob boosts or attenuates mid frequencies within the range of plus or minus 12 dB. This is a bell curve, and the center of your curve is based on this number right here, which you set. It's a pretty simple EQ to understand, and we're going to use it to help sweeten our sounds. So we're going to be focusing on this stack that I've made here. So we can take a listen to that. All right, cool. So this has got a lot of cool stuff happening and we want to make sure everything's sitting right together. I've got a lead. Let's just check this out real quick. I got a high super saw. I got like a low saw. Got some horns. And then I got this guitar synth. So let's get everything to sync up together. So I did the low and high saws already. Let's take a look at them and then we'll move on together. So I'm gonna start building from the ground up. So I wanna start with these two. All right, so let's turn everything else off here and let's engage solo on the stack. So here's what I did. We're gonna start with the low saw. And what I did was you can see I rolled off my lows, okay, because I am stacking it with a sub, so I don't need those frequencies. Then I looked for a little bit of mud here. We can actually go and look for some boxiness together. 
There's not always every one of these attenuations in every sound, but we go and look for them. So let's look for the boxiness between 700 and 1K. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of look around like this for it. And if we don't like it, we're just gonna pull it out. <laughs> So arguably this right here is a little bit boxy compared to this. Let's listen to the difference. So to me, this sounds good. This sounds bad, but I don't hate it. So pull it down just a little bit. Okay. And something like that. All right, cleans it up just a little bit. And then we found some harshness, okay? Just a little bit there. So what I did after that was I cleaned the highs in the same fashion. And then after that, what I did was I played them both together and I started to sweeten with our channel EQ. And what I mean by sweeten is I'm listening to both of these sounds in context or in relation to each other, and I'm seeing what they need to support each other. And this is why we can't do this step in solo. So let's go ahead and do this to the next sound. So let's hear what these sound like together. And I'll A, B some of this stuff for you guys. But just before we get going, I'd like to invite you to join the community by hitting the subscribe and activate notifications. That way you won't miss a beat and you'll get the heads up on all the things as soon as we post them. So, okay, these are really helping gluing these sounds together. Remember, when we reduce or clean frequencies, we are taking a chunk of the sound away. So most times we'll have to sweeten after cleaning. So let's jump into the horns, see what's going on here. So let's solo this and we're going to clean. Okay, clean with our EQ8. First thing we're gonna do is just roll up to 100. Okay, now we're gonna look for some mud between three and 500. Okay, we're gonna reduce it just a little bit. Now let's check out some boxiness. Sounds like it to me right there. Let's pull that down and make it a bit more. Let's see for any harshness. You hear that like whistle that's happening in the background? Anytime I hear that, I just, I like to pull it out. Okay, so we've got that pretty clean now. So now what we're gonna do is solo all of these guys and we're gonna apply our channel EQ. We're gonna listen to all three of these together and I'm gonna see where the horns are a bit deficient or overwhelming. And we're gonna use this channel EQ to place and sweeten the horns into the mix. Well, you can see how that really puts the horns in its best light and helps all three of those guys gel together a bit. And this is pretty much the process that I would repeat on every one of these channels in my stack. And then again on the group. This is pretty much how I EQ. It's gonna take practice, but go through the steps, guys. And with practice, you'll get better. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this feature. Remember, the Ableton certified trainers here at Warp Academy have done a full playlist with in-depth looks at each of these new features. So check them out so you guys can get up and running as fast as possible. And if you like my teaching style, please consider checking out my YouTube page where we have a lot of fun over there. Plus we do some finger drumming. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me. I'll catch you soon. See ya.